John Burko took the Speaker's seat on the 22nd of June 2009. Some 10 years later, on the 31st of October 2019, he officially stood down. Last week we covered Burko's last days and what MPs had to say about him as he left the chamber. But Parliament doesn't stand still for long, so yesterday MPs voted to choose a new Speaker to replace him. So in this video, we're going to run through the process that eventually led to the new Speaker being selected. Before we go through that though, a quick update on our merch store. The Brexit O'Ween shirt will be removed from the store on Wednesday, and the Order 10 Year Anniversary shirt will be removed on Wednesday 13th. So if you want to grab either of these designs before they go, click the link in the description. So before we discuss the ins and outs of what actually happened when Parliament voted for the new Speaker, let's run through the process of how a Speaker gets selected. Firstly, the candidates need to be officially nominated, and all MPs get the opportunity to nominate a candidate. To be considered, candidates need at least 12 nominations, and at least three of those must come from parties other than their own. All of these nominations needed to be in before 10.30am yesterday, when the votes were officially counted. There are seven MPs touted as possible replacements for Mr Burko. Lindsay Hoyle, Eleanor Lang, Chris Bryant, Rosie Winston, Harriet Harman, Meg Hillier and Edward Lee. In the end, all seven received enough nominations and were put forward to the next round. From 2.30 onwards, candidates got a five minute opportunity to put forward their case for becoming speaker. So let's run through those candidates and what they had to say about themselves. Uh, in a moment, I'll call the candidates to address the House uh, in the order which I drew by lot. I I've asked each candidate to speak for no more than five minutes. So I call Dame Rosie Winterton. Yeah. Rosie Winston has held the deputy speaker position since 2017. Before taking the chair, Winston used to be Labour's chief whip. Restoring public confidence in Parliament is all our responsibility, but the Speaker sets the tone. Of course, there will always be times when the House will be rumbustious. That's fine. What the public doesn't like is ill temper and intolerance yeah. under great strain. Order. <laughs> the executive. Uh, thank you very much, Dame Rosie. Chris Bryant. Chris Bryant is a Labour backbencher, and despite not having been Deputy Speaker, he is, to his own admission, a House of Commons geek. I'm standing because I love Parliament, I believe in parliamentary democracy, and I want to do things properly. That means being a Speaker who believes in standing by the rules, somebody who is completely impartial, who knows Erskine May inside out and back to front, I've got it lying by my bedside. Um... <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Bryan. Sir Edward Lee. Edward Lee is a long-time Tory backbencher, having represented his constituents in Gainsborough since 1983. I'm with Chris and Rosie on this. I think the Speaker should submerge his or her character in the job. The Speaker should be the servant of the House. The Speaker should be a dignified, quiet voice. And I believe that all the candidates can achieve that. Thank you, Sir Edward. Name Eleanor Lang. Eleanor Lang has also been Deputy Speaker. But unlike Coyle, Lang is a Conservative and has served as MP for Epping Forest. Standing where I am today for the first time in six years <coughs> reminds me how easy it is to see ourselves as us and them. Whereas for the last six years, sitting there in the chair, it has seemed to me just to be us. Because it's not the role of the Speaker to create division or rancour in this house, but to seek consensus. Thank you, Dame Eleanor. <laughs> Miss Meg Hillier. <laughs> Meg Hillier is the Labour MP for Hackney South and Shoreditch. As well as that, she also chairs the very important Public Accounts Committee. We want to be champions, and I certainly would be of better conduct. I would be an impartial speaker, a director rather than an actor. And we want better timekeeping. UQs and statements are going on too long, and that greater discipline that timekeeping would keep there would also give greater certainty over timing so that we can plan the rest of our lives. Thank you, Ms. Hillier. Sir Lindsay Hoyle. Lindsay Hoyle has been the Labour MP for Chorley since 1997. He has also been Deputy Speaker since 2010. It's about having an accountable speaker to back that up. It isn't just about the backbenches, it's about a speaker that endorses and supports the backbenchers. And that's what I hope I've always shown. I've tried to ensure there is not one part of this House that's not been brought to speak, or whatever size of party 
I have encouraged to make sure their voice is heard. Thank you, Sir Lindsay. Ms Harriet Harman. Harriet Harman is a member of the Labour Party and has been for a long time. So long, in fact, that she's the longest serving female MP. I would reform the Speaker's powers to make them transparent and accountable to this House. And I would be fearless in standing up for the rights of the House. My guiding principle would be that all constituencies are equal. And because of that, all members are equal and owed equal respect. Just a fun bit of trivia. As there was no official speaker while these proceedings were taking place, the job temporarily falls to the longest serving MP in the House of Commons. Having spent 49 years in the chamber, Ken Clark took up the speaker's chair during the selection process. Now, all the candidates should now address the House, so in a moment I'll declare open uh, the ballot. Before I do, I have to give a clear explanation of the process, which is not actually familiar to any of us. So, uh... <laughs> Once the speeches were complete, MPs voted on a secret ballot for their preferred speaker. When selecting a new speaker, the House of Commons uses an exhaustive ballot system, whereby the candidate with the fewest votes in each round gets eliminated. In addition to the candidate with the fewest votes, anyone who gets less than 5% of the votes is also eliminated. Also, candidates can withdraw themselves in the process if they no longer believe that they're likely to win. This continues until one candidate gets a majority of votes and they're selected as the new speaker. So that's how it works in theory, but what happened when MPs voted yesterday to select a new speaker? MPs voted in the first round and Clark announced the results. Because of the system discussed earlier, this means that Hillier was knocked out as the last place candidate, as was Lee, who failed to get 5% of the vote. Hoyle was the clear winner in the first round, but fell 70 votes short of the 50% needed to win. So Clark announced that we were proceeding to the next round, and that none of the other candidates had decided to drop out. The second round knocked out Winterton, with her landing in last place. Subsequently, Harriet Harman chose to pull out of the race, leaving three candidates. The third round eliminated Lang, with her finishing in third place. This left two contenders to progress to the final round, Hoyle and Bryant. Order, order. Chris Bryant, 213. Sir Lindsay Hoyle, 325. So the motion before the House. The question is that Sir Lindsay Hoyle takes the chair of this House as Speaker. As many as of our of that opinion say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. I think the eyes have it. The eyes have it. I invite Sir Lindsay Hoyle to take the chair of the House. Just to voice over this parliamentary weirdness, it's tradition that the new Speaker is dragged out of their chair when elected, to reflect the fact that historically it was a very undesirable job. No clapping, yeah. <laughs> what can I just say, Mr Clark? You've been stabbed first and the job that you've done. It really is appreciated. Yeah. Can I just say thank you to all the candidates who ever have been selected would have made a great speaker. I stand firm that I hope this house will be once a great respected house, not just in here, but across the world. I also want to say to my family, yeah. there is one person who's not here. Yeah. My daughter, Natalie. I wish you'd have been here. We all miss her as a family. She will always be missed, but she will always be in our thoughts. Yeah! So Hoyle ended up winning the vote and has officially become Speaker of the House of Commons. In reaction to the announcement, both Johnson and Corbyn took time to make speeches congratulating Hoyle. I'm no good at call. <laughs> the first time, the Prime Minister. Yeah! Mr Speaker, in, in congratulating you on your election, I observe that you have prevailed over an extremely strong... Field. Let me say, whenever any of us is preparing to speak in this chamber, there is a moment between standing up and when the speaker calls you, when your heart is in your mouth. And in that moment of, of anxiety about whether you're going to make a fool of yourself and so on, uh, <laughs> and indeed at the moment when we sit down amid deafening silence, <laughs> the, the kindliness of the speaker yeah. is absolutely critical to our confidence yeah. and yeah. the way we behave. With Parliament dissolving today for the election, Hoyle doesn't have long left in this session. We'll continue to discuss the election in the coming days, and we'll be back with Hoyle when Parliament returns later in the year. Be sure to subscribe to this channel to get more updates as that plays out. You can also hit the bell icon if you want to be notified every time we release a video. 
And if you want more from us, you can find TLDR across all social networks simply by searching for TLDR News. And if you want your name featured at the end of the videos, just like these people, then you can sign up to back us on Patreon. There's a link to that in the description.